Hi, I'm Kirby Allison. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're gonna feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. In today's Q&A video, I'm gonna be answering your questions about brushes, daubers, and chamois. Remember, if you have any questions or comments while you're watching one of our videos, please ask them in the comments section below. I try to get back to as many of these questions as possible. Our first question today is from Cameron Scott, and it reads, how would you recommend getting polish into the area near where the upper meets the sole? That's kind of a funky area to polish without getting pigment polish onto the edge. Should you just go over it uh, and expect it to buff out? So Cameron, great question. Actually, uh, that is one of the most important yet overlooked parts of the shoe that requires polish. And the area you're referring to is the welt, that on a Goodyear welted shoe is where the outsole is stitched to, uh, that allows the shoe to be easily resold. The reason it's important to polish that area of the shoe with a little bit of neutral wax polish is because the solvents help clean that welt, which is really prone to the accumulation of dirt and the hard waxes just help seal that welt to further waterproof the shoe from any type of water damage. Now here at The Hanger Project, we sell a brush specifically for getting into that area of the shoe, uh, and we just call it our welt dauber. It's a very fine dauber that just allows you to kind of focus that polish in and around that area. And it's actually the first part of the shoe that I recommend you clean, because if you do get any of the neutral wax polish on the upper itself, you can easily buff that out during the shoe shine process. Now, if you don't have a welt brush, you can always use a toothbrush uh, or any other type of dauber that's just gonna allow you to get into that area of the shoe. Great question, and I always recommend that part of a thorough shoe shine routine that you just take a little bit of neutral wax polish, uh, welt dauber, uh, and really just gently brush that area to clean it uh, and also apply those hard waxes to help protect the welt. Our second question is from Alexander Chan, and it reads, do you have to polish the shoe with a high shine cloth, or can you use the horsehair brush you use to wipe off your cream? Uh, so the high shine chamois uh, is really just something that uh, is very useful if you're trying to create a really high shine on the toe or the rear of the shoe, those hard countered areas that don't flex, uh, but otherwise isn't necessary for just a normal ordinary shoe shine. A horsehair brush, uh, the same horsehair brush that you use to buff the cream polishes to a shine, uh, can also be used to buff wax polishes to a shine. Because of the higher concentration of hard waxes in a traditional wax polish, you're going to be able to achieve a higher shine with a horsehair brush than you would with a cream polish. We always recommend one to two applications of a cream polish for the primary care of your shoes because again, a Saphir Pomadeer cream polish is going to have the highest concentration of pigments to kind of resaturate and rejuvenate the finish of the shoe. Uh, but also, uh, the soft waxes and the nutrients are gonna do a better job conditioning the leather. The hard wax polish uh, is really more for just that high shine. It's something for finishing. It's completely optional. Uh, and after you apply the cream polish, if you want to elevate the shine further, you can apply one or two coats of a Saphir Pat Deluxe wax polish to the entire shoe and buff it with a horsehair brush. Now, if you're looking for a higher shine than what you're able to achieve with the horsehair brush, that's whenever you need to bring in a chamois, and there's no better chamois for creating a high shine than our Hanger Project High Shine Chamois. If you have any questions about how to use our Hanger Project High Shine Chamois, or how to elevate that shine even higher, take a look at our series on how to create a mirror shine. Our Baluti Shoe Shine video is also a great video that shows you how you can create a nice high shine uh, using only wax and our high shine chamois. Our third question today is from Chris BD, uh, and his question reads, wondering how you clean off your brushes, daubers, and chamois. So we actually have a video on how to clean uh, brushes, uh, and we're filming a video uh, very soon about how to clean daubers. You wanna have two brushes as part of your shoe shine kit. You want one brush that you use for your dark polishes and one brush that you use for your lighter brushes. Now the reason that you see brushes made out of a dark bristle and a light bristle isn't because those bristles have any different properties, but it's just to help you more easily recognize which brush you're using for your dark polishes and which brush you're using for your light polishes. The reason that that's important is because all shoe shine brushes are gonna accumulate residual polish. 
And so if you take a brush that you just used to buff off some black Pomodier cream polish off your shoe, uh, and then you buff a light brown pair of shoes, you're gonna see streaking. And so that's why you wanna separate those polishes to ensure that you're not going to streak any of your lighter colored shoes. Now, residual shoe polish on your shoe shine brush isn't a problem in and of itself as long as you're careful not to contaminate those with different color leathers. If you're looking to remove any of those residual polishes, the easiest thing to do is to just take your brush and gently buff a cotton chamois, and it's just gonna help clean off any of those residual polishes from your, um, from your shoe shine brush. Now, chamois can be washed. Uh, and honestly, with the exception of our high shine chamois, uh, which we don't recommend washing, a general kind of cotton plus chamois, the more times you wash it, the better it gets. And so what we recommend for washing is just simply washing this alone uh, in a washing machine with light detergent, not heavy detergent. And you can even hand wash this. Uh, tumble drying this with some other towels is perfectly acceptable. Uh, and the more times you wash uh, your uh, plush cotton chamois, uh, the more absorbent it's gonna become uh, while you're using it. Cleaning daubers is a little bit of a different deal. Now, you can use a shoe shine dauber to apply your cream and wax polishes uh, if you don't want to dirty any of your hands. Now, all the Saphir Medallior polishes are such high quality uh, that you could easily apply them with your hands without any risk uh, to your skin because, again, there are no petroleum products used in any of the Saphir Medallior products. But if you prefer to use a, uh, a, a dauber, uh, maybe because you're using it for your welt uh, or you just like using a dauber, the easiest way to clean a dauber is honestly with a little bit of the Saphir Reno Mat because that Reno Mat is gonna remove those waxes and pigments. So what I recommend uh, is just putting a little bit of Reno Mat in your hand, you know, working uh, the polish off under a sink and just washing this under a sink until you get as much of that gunked polish off of your dauber. Our fourth question today is from a B-Mint and it reads, can I apply the Saphir Saddle Soap with a cotton chamois? Uh, the short answer is no. You really don't want to use a cotton chamois to apply your saddle soap uh, because you're not able to really work up a lather with the cotton chamois the same way you can with the dauber. Now we have a uh, dauber that we developed exclusively for the use uh, with our leather cleaning soap. We call it our large or extra large deluxe dauber. Uh, you can see it has a very large head. We use a 100% uh, horse tail uh, on this dauber with a really high density pinning. Uh, and this is a great dauber to use uh, with your leather cleaning soap because it allows you to very quickly and easily work up a nice lather to really work that uh, leather cleaning soap uh, into the shoe itself uh, quickly and efficiently. Uh, you can see, um, you know, compared to the size of our standard dauber, you have a significant uh, amount of increased surface area. Uh, and actually, the dauber that Saphir gives you for free uh, with some of their products is actually a welt dauber. And if you can imagine trying to shampoo your shoes uh, with this versus that, it makes a tremendous difference. So this is a product I really recommend uh, everyone add to their uh, accoutrement, to their assortment. Uh, it can be used uh, just as effectively with the Omninet and Yant, uh, which is a suede cleaner. This is just a great cleaning brush. Our last question today is from Jim Bad 5 and it reads, how should I clean the welt of a shoe with a dauber? So Jim, great question. So I've got uh, my first pair of bespoke George Cleverly shoes. Uh, it was a, a medallion hole cut in burgundy. And as you can see, it's been a while since I've shined this shoe and there's a little bit of dirt beginning to accumulate uh, across the welt. To clean the welt, you need a welt brush and a neutral wax polish. Here I have my Saphir uh, Pet Deluxe uh, Medal Dior polish. Now the reason you want to use a neutral is because there's no pigment, but you still get those uh, high concentration of hard waxes and solvents that's great for cleaning. So apply a little bit of the wax polish on your welt dauber, and then you just want to be careful to kind of work that into the welt. Now there's two benefits of using a welt dauber and some wax polish. First, the solvents in a wax polish are going to help clean any dirt that's accumulated in the welt. The hard waxes are then going to seal that uh, welt thread uh, to ensure that it just remains waterproofed. And then lastly, as an added bonus, uh, you're even going to get some wax polish on the edge itself, which is a great way to just elevate the shine of the edge. So after you've applied this, and I like to do this as the first step in a shoe shine routine because then if I get any wax polish uh, on the upper, uh, I can just buff that off during the shoe shine process. 
So after you've applied the neutral wax polish, allow it to dry. You can either rebuff it with your uh, whelp dauber or sometimes I'll just use a pig bristle brush because again, I'm still able to get these bristles into that whelp. And you just buff that until it just comes to a nice soft shine and is clean. And uh, you know, as you can see, very easy. Uh, this weld is uh, significantly more clean uh, than uh, the other side. So uh, weld care, weld and edges, I feel like really are the, uh, you know, the last element of really elevating your shoe shine to that really uh, high level. Um, you know, edges and heels are so often neglected. It's a topic that's very interesting to me on uh, the best way to take care of those. Uh, we've got some videos on the topic already, uh, and you'll probably see more videos on advanced welt and edge care coming this way. Here at The Hanger Project, I'm proud to have the largest collection of luxury shoe shine brushes, daubers, and chamois in the world. Uh, all these products that I've shown you today are, of course, available on hangerproject.com as well as extensive in-depth guidance on how to use them. If you have any questions, of course, don't ever hesitate to reach out to customer service. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only do these Q&A videos give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering, but they allow me to take a moment to just acknowledge my appreciation for all of your participation in our channel. I've absolutely enjoyed this platform and how it's allowed me to connect more directly with all of you, and I really have fun interacting with you and answering your questions. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment on our channel, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content help us make better videos for you. In today's video, I'm wearing a suit supply sports coat uh, that is actually uh, unlined and made with Vitali Barbaris uh, fabric. Uh, absolutely beautiful uh, navy jacket that is perfect for a Texas summer. I'm wearing a Kent Wang pocket square and one of our new Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade Ancient Matter ties. Of course, I have my trademark white Charvet shirt, a pair of My Taylor or him or Johnny brother khaki chinos uh, that I had made with a single reverse pleat uh, and a tab trouser. These khakis are great for a little bit more of a casual look and feature one inch turn ups or cuffs. I'm wearing a pair of olive green Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade socks and my bespoke George Cleverly Russian Reindeer Split Toed Derbies. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes.